Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands toward heaven and let's love the Lord right now. Father, we love you. God, I praise you today. I lift up my voice and honor you today, God. I'm here in church to show you my devotion. God, to show you how much I love you, Jesus. I'm grateful today. I'm so grateful to know who you are today. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So good to be together with all of you this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. Again, thank you for all the kind words. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. Certainly hope that everyone can stay for a little bit to enjoy some cake, coffee, some drink, and enjoy just being with one another. Amen. Praise God. And now we're going to honor God with our hearing of the Word of God, right? Amen. We're going to hear what God's Word has to say, and then if He does prick our hearts, we want to make the notable changes that God's Spirit is asking for us to change. 2 Corinthians 3.18, and the Bible says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. I just want God to talk to us today. Obviously, everyone in here loves the Word of God. Can't imagine why you would be here if you didn't. But we don't always make the changes that need to be made to our life. And that's why God gave you a pastor to remind you that we've got to make the changes in our life so that we can become more and more like him, like Jesus Christ. Amen? And today I hope that I can do my best to help us to get in that mode and take that step in that direction to become more and more like Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for what we feel in the house of God today. We thank you for your word that never changes. I pray that God, that you would anoint my mind and my heart. I pray you touch everyone today to be receptive, to receive the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone said in Jesus' name, amen. Would you be kind to somebody next to you? Let somebody know it's good to see them. Let somebody know you love them and appreciate them. Praise God. Amen. There's absolutely nothing like the family of God, the people of God. Amen. I'd like to entitle my message today, Changed into His Likeness. Changed into His Likeness. Change. Some people like it, and some people don't. I'm going to say that again. We're talking about change. Some people like it, and some people don't like it at all. What is it? What is change? If you look at the Webster's definition of change and the synonyms to the word change, you will find that it means to correct, to modify, to shift, to switch, or to transform. We're talking about changing one's life. Do you have change for a 20? 
How many times have we said that, right? It's called change because you're switching or you're modifying the bills that you have in your hand. You're changing them for different bills or some coins. So you're getting change. You're changing from one particular thing to another. When I think of the word change, I think of the weather. I think of tires. My wife is going to need a brand new set of tires before the snow falls. I think of plans. Plans change. I think of habits, right? How habits have changed us. I think of a toothbrush. A toothbrush. This conversation happened at men's retreat. In one particular room, we were wondering, how often are you supposed to change your toothbrush? Somebody said that you're supposed to get your teeth cleaned twice a year, and the dentist will give you a brand new toothbrush at that, at that cleaning. Now, you might change your toothbrush more than twice, so you understand change. People change their minds. They change venues. They change their clothes. Please, God forbid, change the coffee grounds, okay? Please, okay? Could you imagine never changing the grounds in the coffee pot, right? It just looks like dirty water, okay? Change the coffee grounds, all right? How about attitude? Attitudes change. Attitudes can change very, very quickly. Matter of fact, you're going to see that around Christmas time. Our attitudes will change around Christmas, right? How about this? How about diapers? That's just how I think, you know? You know, uh, diapers ought to be changed, and some of them quicker than the others, but uh, diapers. How about culture? Our culture is changing very quickly. We are seeing cultural changes happen, even though we may not notice them as quick as we would have liked. There are things that are changing in our, our culture. Constant change takes place right before our eyes, even though we may not even realize it at all. Do you know that change is inevitable? Change is inevitable. The only thing that is constant is change. It has been said that change can be one of the most stressful things in a person's life. In researching change in humans, the study of neuroscience has a statement that they use, and, and this is what it says, neurons that fire together, wire together. So if you have changed into a certain way and you do that for a period of time, the neurons that are firing, they wire together, and so that is why some people do not like change, because they find it a front to what they are used to doing, and thus they've got to rewire those neurons in their brain. People, some people just don't like change at all. So again, this neuron firing and this, you know, what fires together is wired together. That simply means that the more you and I do something, the more we change, the more it becomes a habit. And not only a habit, but biologically it becomes ingrained in who you and I might be. Jimmy Dean, I'm not really sure who this Jimmy Dean is. I, I, I don't know who he is, but I, I like his sausage. Um, I like Jimmy Dean's sausage. It's some of the best. My wife makes uh, biscuits and gravy with Jimmy Dean's hot sausage. And so if you've never had Jimmy Dean's hot sausage in your biscuits and gravy, uh, my wife don't have time to make it for you, but you need to make it on your own. Jimmy Dean said, I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust, I can change my sails to always reach my destination. Winston Churchill, who happens to be one of uh, my favorite men in history, Winston Churchill said, to improve is to change. To be perfect is a change often. I've used this statement here in the last several months. If you're not changing it, 
You're choosing it. If you're not changing it, you're choosing it. Change can be good. Matter of fact, change can be very good for most people. It can transform a life forever. Simply here, if you don't like what you're doing, if you don't like the results in your life, then there needs to be some change that happens in your life today. When folks need things to be better than they presently are, when they want a different result than what they keep getting, they are looking and they are needing change in their life. I know without a doubt there are folks here today that you see things, you have, you have noticed things, you've identified specific things in your life that you want to change. I want to encourage somebody today, whoever you are here this morning, I want to encourage you that you can, you can see the change begin to happen in your life today if you will make up your mind that you are dissatisfied with where you are at. There's also a statement that says you always get what you've always got because you always do what you've always done. I declare to the church this morning that you and I take inventory of where we are, that you and I take inventory of what's going on in our mind. We take inventory of what's going on in our heart, and if we don't like what we see, that we ask God this morning, God, will you just simply help me, uh, amen, to make the changes that I need to make in my life to be what you want me to be. Amen? I read this a little while ago, and the statement that I want to share with you is this. It says, the key to learning. The key to learning is sometimes in what you and I are willing to unlearn. Just want to let that sink in a few minutes. Because we are the product of the choices that we make. We have changed. We have become something, right? Those neurons that have fired together, they become wired together. And sometimes uh, we are stuck in a certain path. Uh, we're, we're in a certain rut. And uh, it says the key to learning is sometimes uh, in what you and I are willing to unlearn. So in light of that, the enemy has sold some of us a bill of goods that has you living a faithless and unproductive life. Think about it. Many of us can be stuck right where we're at because we learned a certain thing or we have, we have de been defeated a certain so many times, right? We believed a lie. Uh, perhaps we think it's because of who we are or it, it's just in our DNA, right? It, it's just the way that mom and dad used to be. It's just the, it's who I am. No, my friend, uh, no, uh, that, that, that is not the way that, that God has designed you and I to be. Uh, amen, God gave you and I the ability. Uh, and if we lack, amen, the ability God has given us his power amen when you combine God uh, and, and the, the, the faith that he has given mankind uh, I am up here to tell you there is absolutely not anything that you and I cannot change uh, that you and I cannot switch uh, modify and transform if God be for us the Bible says if God be for us who can be against me oh the devil he will try to sell us a bill of goods and uh, get us to be faithless and unproductive. The enemy of God would have you imprisoned. He would love for you and I to nothing more than to be rendered useless, unwilling, unwilling to act because of a certain thing learned or maybe a certain change that's happened in our life. You see, too many believers have learned to live the lies of the enemy and we have succumbed to the habits. Hear me, we have succumbed to the habits that we have formed in this life. But I'm here 
Amen. This preacher stands before you. I am here to declare that we serve a great uh, big God. Would you look at your neighbor and say, we serve a great big God. Amen. A God that when you and I desire, amen, when we desire change, that God will step in and do for us what we, uh, amen, it may look, it may seem impossible. Uh, and the Bible says this, the Bible says with man, it is impossible with God, uh, all things are possible. Uh, I'm excited today, uh, amen, to know that no matter what you're facing, uh, no matter what I am facing, uh, no matter what obstacle looks insurmountable, uh, that God uh, has given you and I the ability. uh, He's given you and I the faith. uh, He's given you and I the desire in our hearts to change, to become something, amen, that can give him glory. We serve a great big God. You see, once you and I surrender to him and call out his name, there is no neuron in the brain that can stay unaffected. Hear me. There is no neuron in our brain that will stay unchanged. God can, and I'm here to tell you that God will rewire you and I. He will change what needs to be changed for you and I to see the results that we're looking for. Somebody wants to overcome a bad attitude. Amen. Somebody wants to have a good attitude. I believe it can happen today. Somebody wants to, uh, you, you want to release and get rid of fear in your life. God, uh, amen. The Bible said, uh, amen, that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Uh, I'm preaching on that on Wednesday. Uh, somebody needs to release and let that fear go uh, and put their faith in an almighty God. Uh, he will replace that fear, uh, amen, with trust and courage in him and in his word. Hallelujah. Amen. I serve a great big God today that the Bible says that nothing is impossible for him. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your father did. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that your your mother passed away early uh, in your young years. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of education you have. It doesn't matter if you don't have a lot of money in the bank. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter. Uh, What matters is if you, uh, amen, can just, the Bible says that all we have to do uh, is have faith as a little tiny mustard seed. Uh, A mustard seed is one of the tiniest of seeds. Uh, All you have to do is begin to believe God can change whatever it is that you need changed today we got to surrender to him somebody needs to call out his name what God's telling me right now is there are people that they do it in church they call out his name at at church because they're hearing the preached word. Maybe they've been moved by the, the, the worship service and maybe it's a little bit of uh, 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 you know, uh, the eyes of uh, the, the brothers and sisters that are around about them. The peer pressure is setting in uh, and, and that notable change can happen right here in the front of the church in the altar area. But, but, but if you can't seem to push past uh, what it is that's blocking or stopping you, uh, God can do a miracle, uh, amen, when you're not even in the house of God. Uh, if you make up your mind, if you're determined today, uh, amen, if you're determined uh, that, that you're not going to take no for an answer uh, at the devil amen the devil's been uh, uh, he, he, his power is limited by the cross uh, if you just remind the devil uh, amen that he has no power over you uh, and that if you make up your mind uh, you can do whatever you and God say that you can do hallelujah amen God's going to rewire somebody if, if not not here in the house of God. God's going to begin to rewire you because you care enough about the purpose that he's called you to. You care enough about the word of God. You care enough about, amen, living in that divine will of God. God's going to begin to remake you. He's going to begin to modify you. He's going to begin to transform you when you make up your mind that you're sick and tired of the results that you're getting in your life. If sometimes the key is, it, is advancing oneself, if sometimes the key to advancing oneself is in what we are willing to unlearn, 
then let it be said that I go on record that I want more faith. I want more of God than I have ever experienced before. Yesterday or last week or a month ago, whatever victories I'm holding on to, God, I'm grateful for those victories. I'm grateful for the move of God in my life. But God, it's not just the past that I, I, I'm holding on to, but God, it's a bright future. That God, that I know that there's greater things in store for me. God, I know that if I make a change in my mind, if I make a change in my heart, the Bible says we've got to break up that fallow ground. We've got to tear up that hardness of our heart and we've got to look to our future. Hear me. Amen. Our future is bright. Your future is bright. Why? Because we've got a God that's going to take care of our future. Amen. My future is in the palm of the living God. Amen. And he is for me, not against me. He knew me before I was even formed in my mother's womb. Somebody needs to get faith today and rise up out of their stupor and begin to say, okay, God, I believe in your word. And I'm going to begin to live by faith. I want to be free to fulfill my God-given design and purpose. You see, our text, it talks about an open face. It talks about, I mean, I, I love this verse. It says, with an open face beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. It says, they are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let whatever it is in my life, God, whatever it is that's blocking the change that needs to happen, whatever it is that is keeping me from overcoming, God, I'm asking you to let it be removed so I can see. Lord, I want to be able to see Jesus face to face and that I can learn from his reflection. Amen. I can learn from his example in my life. Uh, the Bible says from glory to glory, from victory from, to victory to victory by his spirit. Uh, amen. That will be at work in my life. I want to be changed into his likeness. Anybody else? I cannot stay stuck. I cannot, I don't, I don't want to, you know, stay in a holding pattern. I've heard of people being stuck on a tarmac and a plane for hours. Oh, how miserable the air conditioning. Not, I don't want to be, I don't want a man to be stuck in a holding pattern in my life and, and be rendered useless or be ineffective or be powerless over the enemy. No, I want change. I must see that I, I must see that I am too much like me, right? And not so much like him. Praise God. I want to, it says face to face, that you and I, that you and I, because of what Jesus Christ did at Calvary, right? Amen. The Bible says, when Jesus was crucified and we said, when he said it is finished, the Bible says the veil was rent from top to bottom. No longer did a priest have to go and, and, and speak to God on my behalf. But what that meant when the veil was ripped the top to bottom, that you and I, we get to go face to face with Jesus Christ. No longer does a man have to answer for me, but I can cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. Jesus Christ makes himself available to me. Amen. The Bible says God manifested himself in flesh. God took on the form of man, the man Christ Jesus. And ripped the veil. That separation. No longer is there any separation. No longer should there be any, any division. No longer should there be anything from keeping you and I, uh, amen, from having that intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know what sins uh, are keeping you down. I don't know what habits uh, are trying to define you. Uh, I, I don't know, but I do know this, uh, that if you make up your earthly mind, uh, if you would surrender your earthly heart uh, to a heavenly God, uh, amen, to a heavenly faith, uh, there there will be a change. There will be a transformation today. I've got to see myself as I am. And then I've got to see Jesus for who he is. 
I want, I want there to be, I want there to be a shift. I want there to be a change. I want there to be a transformation. Amen. I, 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 I want to begin to believe like I've never believed before. Hear me, church. When we believe, when we act, when we build on our, when we build on the most important concepts, when we give God our family, when we give God our future, when we give God our time, when we give God our finances, when we give God our mind and our heart. The Bible says that we're supposed to serve the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, hear me today, somebody. Uh, we we, we got to stop, amen, being divided. We've got to stop uh, sharing uh, what, what God deserves uh, with everything else in this world. Uh, God is asking, amen, for somebody to make up their mind uh, that they're going to be forever changed. Uh, amen, that you're going to be forever ever a man or a woman of faith that you are going to begin to operate in the spirit how do we form or shape our concepts the materials we study what we hear taught helps the things we accept to be true become amen things that seem to drive us amen we've got to we've got to begin to operate in the spirit Amen. We got to begin to we we we, we got to begin to let go and let God have His way in our life. We got to quit trying to control everything else. We got to give God control. Amen. So many people need to be changed in our world. They have formed and they are shaped by worldly concepts that are not of God and not of his word. You see, God uses his word to bring about the life change that all of us desperately need. I stumbled upon this story. A converted cannibal in the South Sea Islands was sitting by a large pot, a large stewing pot, but he was reading his Bible when an anthropologist wearing a funny-looking helmet approached him and asked, what are you doing? The native replied, I'm reading my Bible. The anthropologist scoffed and said, don't you know that modern civilized man had rejected, they rejected that book? It's nothing but a pack of lies. You shouldn't waste your time reading it. The cannibal looked him over from head to toe, licked his lips and slowly replied, sir, if it weren't for this book, You'd be in the pot. The word of God has changed his life. And hear me. The word of God has changed his appetite. Hear me, somebody. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Amen. This is the apostle Paul again talking to his son Timothy. His son Timothy in the faith. He said, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. He said in verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I like what Paul declared here to Timothy. He said this, he said this, watch, that it's the what? It is the Holy Scriptures which are able to do what? To make one wise unto salvation. Thoroughly furnished. Amen. Wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Think about that. No matter what, no matter what you're struggling with right now, no matter what element in your flesh, no matter what obstacle in your life, no matter what, it doesn't matter what it is. You, you know what it is. You know if you're overcoming uh, obstacles in your mind, uh, your, your, your will, your emotions, finance. It doesn't matter whatever it is. The Bible here declares, uh, it says, 
It's the Holy Scriptures. It is the Bible that will make you wise. Hear me. There's a lot of very intelligent people in our world, very intellectual people, very wise people. Amen. But we're not talking about that kind of intellect. We're not talking about just earthly wisdom. But the Bible says, uh, I love it. Uh, It is the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise. What? Unto salvation. That's what you and I ought to be living for. That is what, amen, must have, amen, our desire. That is what must have our attention. That the scriptures, the holy scriptures, will make you and I wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. You see, if we believe believe in God, then we should believe and live the word of God. Of God. I'm going to say that again. If we believe in God, then we should believe and live in the word of God. Amen. If we say that we believe in God, then we need to live and obey his word. Can I get an amen? So if you're serious about changing your life today, you're going to have to live according to the word of God. You're going to have to emulate the life and the teachings of Jesus Christ. You and I will need to read it. Study it, memorize it, meditate upon it, and apply it to our life each and every day. It takes change, and it takes wanting to be transformed. It takes wanting to be modified. It takes wanting to be corrected every single day. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. I love it. But though we, with an open face, beholding as in a glass, I'm almost done, if the musicians want to come. But we all with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit that provides the power. It's the Holy Spirit that will provide the conviction. It will be the Holy Spirit that will provide the direction for the life change that you and I need so desperately. The Holy Spirit in us acts like an internal warning system by convicting us. When you and I begin to make wrong steps, when you and I begin to make wrong decisions, it is the convicting power of God, amen, that should pierce our soul, and the fear of God that should grip our heart with a warning to change directions immediately. I love it. In the book of Isaiah 59 and verse 19, Isaiah 59, 19 says, so, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The spirit of God uses the word of God to make the child of God more like the son of God. Amen. I'm going to say that again. The spirit of God uses the word of God to make us the child of God more like the son of God. Would you stand with me this morning? I'm not able to preach my entire sermon. I had to kind of move past, forward some of it. You see, some of us are, we're willing Some of us are very willing to be led by the Spirit, just simply led by His Spirit. In a service just like this, we're able to hear the preaching of the Word of God. We're able to be encouraged by what we hear and and willfully make the notable changes in our life to obey God. But for some of us, it doesn't happen so easily. So some of us are changed by the Spirit leading us and and guiding us and then there's others that we need kind of some of those circumstances in life to get our attention and what I mean by circumstances is we need problems we need pressures we need heartache and difficulty sometimes we need the stresses of life see suffering and pain they also get our attention C.S. Lewis said, he said that God whispers to us in our pleasure, but shouts to us in our pain. 
You see the painful circumstances, whether we bring them, perhaps we brought them on ourselves, or other people have caused them or the devil incites them. They're used by God to help us to grow, to change more in his likeness, to be more devoted to him. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 2 says, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? It says, For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. Our God is like a refiner's fire. His power is like a, a fuller's soap. We're always changing due to his fire, which is refining us, and God is cleaning us with his his soap. Isaiah 40, 8 and 10 says, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Do you want change? So we welcome the furnace of affliction. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever trial, whatever circumstance, whatever hardship, amen, God's, God's just trying to get your attention. He's just trying to show you that, hey, you've got to wake up got to come to me first Peter 1 and 7 says the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> Lord thank you for your word but we all that's talking about the believers in our text but we all the believers with open face Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. <clears throat> the, word, the, the two words, the phrase open face means that you and I, as believers, have been given the privilege of knowing Jesus personally. Again, as I've mentioned, the veil has been ripped from top to bottom. We have direct access to the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. There is nothing that can hear me. There is absolutely nothing that can hinder you. Nothing that can Keep us from our desire in knowing Jesus Christ this morning. Somebody today can be changed forever. Somebody this morning can be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ from glory to glory. That means little by little, victory to victory, slowly and surely, becoming more and more like him. As we keep our face face to face you see we, that's what the whole thing is face to face we got to stay face to face with him we can't face him on Sunday and not face him the rest of the week and come back and face him no face to face meaning that we're in that in that forever relationship with Jesus Christ victory to victory glory to glory little by little I don't know who I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning I don't know what you're going through what you're facing I don't know what challenges are in your life but I do know that God is here this morning I do know that it is his will that somebody deals with whatever it is in your life that's keeping you from changing yourself from changing your mind from changing your heart from changing the direction of your feet from changing the entire future direction of your family changing your tongue the Bible says life and death it's the power of the tongue. I don't know, amen, who it is this morning that needs to respond, but open this altar today for you. Just to take inventory of who you are, take inventory of where you are, take inventory of what needs to be changed, and then look to God and believe and trust that he's going to do it. Open this altar this morning.